everybody and welcome to another video. Today I will show you how I implement a React hook recently uh, for dealing with real-time chat uh, and web sockets in a project that I created recently for mobile and web. I uh, managed to create this uh, reusable uh, React hook um, for dealing with real-time chat. And the library of my choice was uh, Socket.io, which makes uh, real time uh, web sockets a little easier. So, um, and um, I've been very happy with that choice. It was pretty simple to create the backend for it, and the front end library is just as intuitive. So, yeah, thumbs up for me. Anyway, um, yeah, if you are interested in a reusable hook for socket io or if you're interested in web sockets or if you're just interested in how you can create your own custom hooks uh, i think this video might be useful for you all right so let's get started like the first thing i want to do in here is uh, to pull in my library and i'm going to be using socket.io so i want to pull in socket.io dash client okay and after pulling that one in, I can go in here and just import uh, that class from the library here. And I'm just gonna call it IO. All right, now next step uh, would be to create the, uh, the hook itself here. And I'm just gonna call it use web sockets. And yeah, there's an, Naming convention in React world, whenever you're creating a hook, you want to be using the lowercase u's in front. That way you know that this is an actual hook. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be using that naming convention here as well. All right, so next step is to creating the, the props for this um, React hook. And uh, I can define a type here, I can call it props, and then go up here and then find that so for me I would like to have a user ID and this can just be a number for example and the reason why I want this when doing chat is I of course want to know what user is currently sending the messages right so we need a user ID at least and then another one which can be kind of nifty um, this one is um, usually uh, defined in most advanced hooks and that's an enabled uh, prop and this one is very useful for when you're waiting for a variable to be defined in an asynchronous call uh, then you can pass in that variable to check if it's there and if it's there then you can set the enable to true and then the react hook can do whatever it needs to do so this is a pretty good convention that many many hooks we're using so i also want to be using that one and then i want to create an optional one here which is going to be an unconnected function and uh, yeah i'm going to show later how this one is useful all right down here i can destruct out my props here and uh, yeah i can now get started on the code so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a ref and it's going to be uh, use ref here, use ref hook. And uh, for the type, I'm going to pass in socket IO client dot socket. And this is just going to be the uh, socket object that I will define uh, once somebody once we have a connection okay and that's just gonna look like this then i want to create another or use another hook here and that's going to be use state hook and that's actually going to be our last piece of state here so and that's going to be messages so use state and here i'm just going to pass in an empty variable now what i can do is i can define how a message should look and if you just want a very simple message, uh, we probably want 
uh, some content of the message, right? So we want a sender and we want a, the user ID that is receiving it. And then we want probably a date so we can show some timestamp. Oh, like this. All right. So messages can be a uh, message array here like this. Okay, cool. That's all we need for hooks or well, almost, but uh, yeah, let's continue a little bit. So now I want to have a send method and this one is used for uh, sending a message and I actually want to return this one so I can use it from the outside. But uh, I'm going to come that back to that one later. Now I'm going to use actually another hook and this is going to be the last hook and that's going to be use, use effects and this is kind of where the meat of the uh, where the meat of this uh, hook it will be so here the first thing we will check first is it enabled and if it's not enabled we just can return right away here all right and we need to make sure that this one is inside our dependency array otherwise we are not going to get an outdated value of enabled up here all right next step is to define our socket and our socket is defined by calling io as a function here okay like this and here we just pass in the url of our, of our socket io connection so in the beginning we will probably be on localhost somewhere so localhost 3000 is going to be a solid value to put in here okay now for my implementation after um, I have uh, connected I uh, would like to emit an event immediately and this event is just gonna be an event I'm gonna call join room and in here I'm just gonna pass a payload and for me it's just gonna be actually I'm just gonna make this symbol I'm just gonna pass in the user ID to indicate that hey user to join this room all right next up i want to define a uh, some of the some of the events that happen so one event is going to be the message one and this is whenever a message comes in okay and uh, all i want to do whenever a message comes in is just i want to set messages i want to grab the previous message then I want to concat that with the new message, nothing else. And here I should probably type this one, otherwise I'm going to get an error. So here I'm going to type it to message. Another event is going to be one that comes built in with socket IO and that's going to be the disconnect event. And uh, what do I want to do when we disconnect? Well, nothing for now, but Probably I can put a log statement in here or something. Something useful. All right. If you have an actual room in your chat app, you could say that you could send uh, and emit a message in here saying oh, values left the room or whatever it may be. All right, the next one is going to be a another built-in event is going to be the connect event and in here i can do a check on unconnected and if that unconnected is defined so unconnected is this prop that we optionally can pass in if that one is defined we can just call it okay so if you want to fire off some callback whenever we connect we can do it like this cool now I have another one that is also built in this one is quite important and that is reconnect in here we can call uh, something in case you lose the connection for a second socket IO make sure that 
we reconnect if there should be some internet issues and uh, the thing I want to do is I want to rejoin the room in case I disconnect so I'm just gonna copy paste that part and uh, put it here okay so far so good now at the end we can set ref.current to our socket and uh, this way we can always um, access our a socket from anywhere else in the app or in the app I mean anywhere else in this function uh, which or in this hook rather and uh, a good place would be up in the send method but uh, yeah let's just save this first and then jump down outside the use effect and then in here um, return something so what I want to return to the outside is going to be the send method right and uh, I haven't set up the send yet but I'm, I'm actually at least want to expose this one and then I want to expose the messages as well okay cool now one more thing we can put in our dependency array here is going to be the use ID since we are using that one as well so make sure to pass that one in here and uh, then we actually need to do one last thing and that's going to be to make a cleanup function and in our case we just want to call socket that disconnect so whenever this hook unmounts or changes like some of these properties change we make sure we disconnect so we only have one session open at a time alrighty this is looking pretty neat looking pretty neat let's um, jump up here to our send so what do we actually want to do in our send so I'm exposing send to the outside down here so I need to define what kind of parameters do I want to send into my app or to my to this hook and the first thing is going to be the message so the content of the message and then probably I will be interested to know who is the sender, who is sending this message right now. All right. And then I can access my ref here. And then on my socket, I can call the emit function. And here I can emit a message and then just put uh, whatever content I get in here. So. I define previously how my message would look, it would look like this. So we have some content, that's gonna be message. Then we have the send ID, that's gonna be whatever send ID we get here. Then we have a use ID, this use ID is defined from this prop up here. And last but not least we have the date, and date is just gonna be the current date, whenever this one is sent out. Okay. That's looking pretty neat. Now, this is actually all we we need for our hook. And uh, this is how my hook looks in uh, my current two apps. And uh, it is uh, very simple, but uh, it's working quite well. So uh, now I'm gonna give an example of how this hook is used uh, from the outside. All right, guys, so we are now inside the trainer chat component. And in the beginning of the video, you saw me having a chat going on uh, with a trainer, and this is basically the component. Okay, so here you can see I'm using the use uh, my WebSocket hook here, and uh, you can see I'm passing in course ID and use ID, right? So this course ID was not part of the hook before but this is just an extra parameter that I'm s passing in to kind of define um, what chat is this like who is the user what course is it like you can pass in how many variables you want here this is just enough for me to define a, a unique key for for this chat and then the enable one here I'm checking for course ID and ID and uh, these ones may be zero uh, since they need to fire off an async call in the background 
uh, in order to define some of these. So I'll just make sure that I don't fire off my use effect in here uh, unless these variables are ready to go. And then I have an unconnected, which is going to call scroll to bottom. And that is just this uh, scroll to end uh, function that fires here on a ref that is attached to a scroll view. Okay. And you can see here I'm exposing messages and sent, which are the variables we exposed before. And now I'm going to show how I use it. So uh, down here I have a scroll view. I have some chat messages. At the very bottom, you can see I have a chat text field. And here I am calling the send method. Okay. And you can see here as the first one, I'm just passing in the message. So the message is just a use state hook that I'm using for the value for this text field. So that one is straightforward. And then an ID, which is my user ID here. And that's all. I just pass in those two variables and then the hook takes care of the red, takes care of the rest. And now for the second one, which is messages. So how I'm using messages here. So first of all, I have a use effect in place that whenever messages change, I make sure that I'm scrolling the chat to the bottom. That is pretty handy uh, in my uh, scenario. Because uh, what if somebody sends a message and you're not at the bottom, you don't know if you got a new message. And uh, other than that, I'm also looping over all the messages here. Um, as you can see, I'm mapping over the messages. And uh, yeah, I'm in the end, I'm putting it a component here that shows each chat message. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward, uh, I would say, and uh, I hope you guys learned anything from this video. In the next video, if you're interested, I can show how the backend is implemented for this is this socket IO interaction. Uh, it's pretty simple, and um, I think it might be useful for you. Uh, even though there are so many videos out there showing how to set up a socket IO server. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.